Hello, this is your Preaching Patriot coming to you on D-Day 2024, the 80th anniversary of our storming of the beaches at Normandy. I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about this very important Memorial Day. Uh, it takes place just uh, a week after or so after we celebrate uh, Memorial Day here in the United States where we remember those who have fallen, who have those who have given their lives, uh, that we might enjoy the freedoms that we have today. And uh, D-Day is something that uh, we really need to remember. Uh, the Bible tells us in particular that remembering those who have sacrificed of themselves is something that is of paramount importance. It's something not to be forgotten, it's something to take very important. Uh, if you have any doubts about that, read Hebrews chapter 11. It's sometimes referred to as the Hall of Fame of Old Testament saints. Uh, after an introduction of the definition of faith, and the explanation of faith, uh, the author of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews is the Lord himself, but the writer of Hebrews, the, the human who penned Hebrews uh, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, begins to speak of the first human martyr, Abel, and continues on uh, through all of those people, many, many of the Old Testament saints who sacrificed of themselves, giving time, talents, labor, and whatnot, doing many, many different things. Uh, too many even to mention within that rather lengthy chapter of 40 verses. Uh, some are just kind of crammed together. Some of the things that are mentioned are people who sacrificed and, and did things not knowing what the outcome was going to be. And at the end of this lengthy explanation of people who left their families, of people who left their home countries, of people who went out and didn't even know where they were going or what the final outcome was going to be, some people who suffered within their own nation, some people who died within their own nation, some people who died abroad. Many, many of these people, uh, they, they had no real true understanding of the overarching uh, scenario of what they were going out for in God's calling, and yet they did it, just like the servicemen did they knew, the only thing they knew is that they were fighting for freedom. They were fighting for, for right. They were fighting for the people back home so that they would not be under tyranny. And we owe them a great debt of gratitude. And these people in, that are listed in Hebrews chapter 11 are very much the same way. Now in their case, they never did receive the promise. They died not even having received the promise. And, and the people that we lost during D-Day and the ensuing days and weeks and months after that in the European theater during World War II, they didn't receive the promise either, but they gave it to us. They left it for us. And it's our job to hold on to that promise. It's our job to bring that promise forward into the next generation. They died for the Constitution of the United States, for the, for the future generations of the United States. A Constitution and a nation that was founded on the laws and principles of the Lord God himself. You may not be aware of this, and I'll speak on this more around the time of the 4th of July, but during the Second Continental Congress, when we actually made the uh, Constitution that we have today, there was a point where legislators literally came to blows. They weren't able to make a decision on how even to proceed 
that's the kind of odds they were at with one another. And finally, they called in a preacher to pray. And that's how they got the proceedings started and moved forward. Folks, check your calendar. Check your history. Know why we have the freedoms that we have. And be aware of those that are trying to take them away from you. Pray to the Lord. Look at 2 Chronicles 7.14, and when you feel yourself or your nation straying from those blessings that you enjoy so much here in the United States of America, heed those words. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Until next time, stay in his word and stay true to his word. In Christ's undying love, amen.